Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing super well. So um, in today's video, I'm tackling a very frequently asked question on my social media, which is how do I edit my Instagram photos? For me, I Instagram is such a source of anxiety for me in terms of what well, it used to be quite a bit in terms of the kind of content I wanted, I wanted to create on there. I follow so many girls who I love their content like and I'm not talking content like content for me isn't just taking a picture in the middle of the road like for me content is like using your environment what's around you and creating a story you're telling a story and that's what makes me follow someone that's what makes me subscribe to somebody it's not just using the portrait mode on your phone and calling it content like that's just how I envision when I see creative content. That's what I envision when I when I talk or reference to creative content. I'm not saying I'm there. I'm not saying that's what I do, but it's definitely what I strive to do. Like I want to be a storyteller as opposed to just a poser, like just someone who poses in front of the camera. And that's what I try to do in my taking pictures of flat lakes, taking pictures in restaurants, different spaces, um, taking pictures of buildings, like for me in that moment like I would have seen something that I absolutely love and I just want to capture it and a lot of the time that that sort of content doesn't make it on my Instagram because I feel like I'm probably the only one who would like it and a lot of the time those are the pictures that don't get likes what gets likes is selfies and outfit of the day pictures and that's just the that's just what it is that's just that's just con that's just what people um, digest and what they are willing to like or click on I feel like it is a universal language like what you wore and what you look like your face your yourself for the day so that's fine but with that being said I still want to be true to my authentic self and still upload pictures that I think are really beautiful like I could take a picture of a bathroom and I would have really loved the interior of the bathroom and I might be the only one like I remember when I was in London this year we went to this restaurant called Harry's. I went to the toilet and oh my god, I fell in love with the interiors of this bathroom. And I was like, I have to capture this. So I took a picture on my phone, I edited it, and I uploaded it on my Instagram. And I feel like I got like something stupid, like 400 or 200 likes. I don't even know. But I'll never take that down because I was like, I was obsessed with that. And also because Harry's is like one of my favorite restaurants in London. And I also took a picture of the interiors in Harry's as well, which I loved being there. I went there twice in the space of like two days. Like, I loved it so much. I loved the food. I loved the aesthetic. It was so traditional, but it was, oh, it was stunning. And those pictures didn't get likes, but um, I want to tell a story with my images as well. Those make it onto my Instagram. But once again, people want more outfit of the pic outfit of the day pictures and whatever. So. If I am going to do an outfit of the day, in London for example, I would take an outfit of the day picture in front of something that is so London, that is so British. So it could be the, an outfit of the day, but I'm going to be in front of a black cab. The picture should speak for itself in that sense. So that's my angle when it comes to sort of creating content on my platforms and well, my Instagram specifically. And I mean, gosh, if I traveled more often, I promise you, I would have the time of my life just creating content like that's all I really want to do is take beautiful pictures edit them beautifully and upload them for people to enjoy so getting into um, my actual editing so I use about four apps to edit my pictures I know that really sounds hectic but it's really not a lot of these you have to pay for or they are free but you have to pay um, an in-app you have to pay for an in-app purchase so You'll download it but there's certain like functionalities that aren't available to you in the free mode so you would have to pay for it there's only one that i pay a monthly fee for and but that's because i have it on all of my devices as well so that's why i need that one but anyway um so i actually in my phone i have um my photo app in its own group i've got my frequently used at the top i have facetune i have picked up go and then I also use Lightroom. I use Facetune essentially to just smooth out my skin um, and it's not doing it over the top but it is just sort of just like giving the image a more polished look 
uh, I'm not really morphing my body or anything like that. I'm just trying to make myself, me, look a bit more polished in terms of just like um, smoothing up my skin because when I use the other apps, when I increase the clarity, I sharpen the image, I increase um, the contrast, you know, it just makes other things more than they are. Like it'll just show like my pores and I don't really, you know what I'm saying? Like it just, ex it, it, those, those steps will emphasize things that really aren't in the natural picture. So just to start from an even slate, I'll go in and I smooth out my skin in Facetune. If I, my eyes are open and facing the camera, I like to whiten my eye area as well because um, I want the eyes to pop a little bit more. And then the next app I use is Picked Up Go. And my favorite thing about Picked Up Go, which is what makes editing for me so easy, Picked Up Go is great for those initial sort of steps of making the image brighter, increase, increasing the contrast, warming it up. Those basic sort of functionalities that just make the image look more crisp, that makes it look like you took it on a, like, a professional camera. That's what I like about Picked Up Go, like you just increase those things slightly just to make it a bit more crisp and clean and sort of like just on brand. <laughs> what I love about Picked Up Go is that that first image that you did those, you add all these things, let's say in one image you added auto contrast, auto color, or um, crispy, crispity, um, add more contrast, it will save your history. So it will save about Two days ago, you used you you edited a picture, you edited this picture or a picture with all of these filters on top of it, and you can choose to copy and paste those edits onto your new picture, which is great because if you're someone who you know you take the same sort of pictures, you take food pics, you take outfit pics, you take selfies, and you take places, you take pictures of places or like interiors, you will know that okay in dark lit rooms this sort of combination works. So you're gonna just copy and paste the combination and just add it onto your picture. This is the amazing thing about Picked Up Go. It makes editing so quick because you don't have to start from scratch. You just copy and paste your previous setting onto a new picture. If you don't like the way it looks, you can just change one or two things and it'll still look amazing. You're just gonna change it for each picture according to what you like. After Picked Up Go, I open up a Lightroom and Lightroom is where the game changes, kids. Lightroom became super popular over the last two years, especially amongst like travel vloggers. You'd see travel vloggers have the most amazing um, photos. Like there was this sort of aesthetic that was like, it looked different, like it looked cute. Like I loved it so much. So um, I taught myself Lightroom and I, I did it for a while. I hesitated for doing it because it was just so intimidating. Like I didn't know where to start. and. That's fine, so I cheated. I bought presets, which is not a cheat, but it's fine. Cause a lot of people sell presets, like these photographers and stuff sell presets. And they all have these like nice names, like Bali, Cali, City, Egypt, Fashion, Foodie, Greece, Morocco, Portrait, Tahiti. Like if you were in Bali and you were surrounded by like a lot of greenery, those presets would be amazing for your pictures. If you were in California, like in this like, like palm trees and lots of sun and lots of like white buildings and whatnot and beach Cali would be amazing for that so another blogger who I think has the most amazing presets I haven't purchased them yet but I am definitely going to is Asiami Gold she's chocolate she has the most she takes the most beautiful Instagram pictures so um, Asiami's um, pictures are amazing and she also started selling presets about last year sometime. But one thing you have to remember is that irrespective of the presets that you choose, they're not going to match your photos exactly, right? Because you're going to be different under, you're going to be under different lighting conditions, you're going to be in a different environment, you're going to be telling a different story. So you definitely want to tweak and toggle some of the existing um, preconditions that come with a purchased preset and that my friends is trial and error so even if you were to buy a Siamese, even if I were to sell you presets and tell you guys buy my presets you would still have to do your work in terms of shifting adjusting toggling the contrast the shadows the vibrancy all of those things just to make your image pop and I only toggle things just to until the picture look right just move things move things up move things down move things left move things right until it looks nice for you 
that's that's the that's the way I taught myself. I was using those three apps for alone for a very long time, and then I went back to using VSTO because I felt like something about pictures was missing. Like I'd look at like Asiyami's pictures, for example, and she would look so rich and brown. So I started playing around with VSTO again because VSTO now introduced new filters into it, and there's this filter that I love on there called Street Etiquette. It makes your images a little bit darker, but it still washes you out a bit more. But now VSEO has a, uh, a setting which I love so much, which is called which is called skin tone, and it just makes you. It just like I don't know. I wouldn't say it corrects your skin tone, but like if you're brown, it makes you more brown. So I'm gonna give you an example of what I mean. I have an image here of myself. I'm gonna just put it up here. I have an image here of myself in a restaurant and. The image here looks a bit pink like if you just look at the the, the color of my legs um, my hands my face I just look a little bit pink in VSEO um, the editing that I did in VSEO I have made myself to look a lot more brown and um, taken away that pinkness and so that was that skin tone feature in VSEO that is essentially the difference with that skin tone feature in VSEO. It's a game changer. I love it so much. And it's in all my pictures. And if you just go through my Instagram, I think that's the aesthetic people are constantly asking me about. Like, what is that? Like, the feed looks this, like, beautiful hint of brown. And my skin sort of looks the same color in all my pictures. And that's because of my skin, that skin tone feature in VSEO. And once again, in VSEO, you're going to play around with toggling the contrast. And in VSEO is where I add my graininess to my pictures. It gives a texture, it gives a personality. So that's it, guys. That is all it takes to make my Instagram the way it is. But now I feel like I definitely have found my groove in terms of what works for me and what makes me feel comfortable and what is less stressful. And I've been doing that for the last two years. So yeah, no complaints on my end. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different, but definitely requested. So I hope it helped you out. And I will see you soon.